Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got a super cool knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the brand new Hinderer Project X. Oh my gosh, it feels like it's been forever since we've, you know, seen a brand new folding model uh, from Hinderer Knives. And uh, this guy's finally here. Uh, thank you so much to the gentleman who sent this in for review. Thanks to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below in my description. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. So this may or may not be available uh, at the time of this video. It depends on when you're watching it. In any case, I will provide links down in the description that will take you to various retailers that will at some point have these if they don't have them right now. Um, this is a hinderer knife. Anybody who's familiar with hinderer knives knows that hinderer knives are hard to get. The demand is incredibly high. This is one of the, you know, most American, you know, knife products that exists on the market right now. And, uh, Rick Hinder has got a good track record when it comes to quality, um, and, uh, just, you know, catering to the people who buy his products. Uh, he's well known for trying to make knives that will fit, um, you know, a variety of different roles uh, and will fit in the pocket of a variety of different types of people. Uh, big, small, thin, thick, right? Different, a whole bunch of different stuff. So, and this knife does a lot of that really, really well. But for that reason, his knives over time, right? And a lot of other elements, a lot uh, over time, his knives have become extremely popular. Um, so don't be surprised if you can't just go buy this somewhere because they are usually sold out. Let's go ahead and get a measurement on this guy. So overall length of the Hinderer Knives Project X is coming in at about eight and three quarter inches overall. The blade length is coming in at about 3.6 and your cutting edge is also coming in at about 3.6. It's a big knife, not a massive knife, but a big knife if you wanna to compare to the rest of the Hinderer line. Let's do some size comparisons. We're gonna start off with some other Hinderer knives. Uh, the Hinderer XM18, three and a half inch and the Hinder XM24. I know some people are saying, why not the, you know, the half track and the full track? I don't own those, sorry. I cannot conjure them. Um, but uh, yeah, you are thinking, you're going on the right path in terms of thought. Um, this knife is uh, closer to the size of the full track, but still a small, it feels less bulky than the full track, which is now discontinued. Uh, and it's definitely larger than the half track, but it's, this is a, an, an in-between size knife in terms of, you know, comparing with the XM18 and the XM24, but it feels a lot, you know, a lot more like the XM18, right? When we talk about thickness between these two, um, we're looking at extremely similar thickness, um, and we're just overall, we're really, we're talking about a knife that really uh, takes up just about exactly the same amount of room in the pocket. It's really, this is a bigger knife that does not carry that much bigger. I'm gonna give you some more examples here uh, in just a little bit, but let's go ahead and do some other size comparisons against some knives that are a bit more common. How about up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat uh, Model 2? So you can see they're just a bit bigger than the Rat 1, quite a bit bigger than the Rat 2. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3, where is that? There it is, sorry. Um, yeah, definitely closer to the size of the PM2, but it's just, it's quite a bit larger than both and way more cutting edge, which is something that, you know, I think I should point out. It does not have a forward choil, which means the total amount of cutting edge actually rivals the XM24. Um, that's something I think a lot of people will want to consider there. Last but not least, the, did we do the, no, we didn't. Uh, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the, um, Bug Out. So, there you go. Let's put it up against, we did it up against the Hinderer. Let's put it up against something more common, like that, by the way, the action is phenomenal. It's a triway pivot system, it's what you'd expect. Thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3, you can see here, uh, the Hinderer is titanium on the lock side and then a titanium liner with a G10 scale. It is a little bit thicker than the Spyderco Para 3. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. This thing has quite the flipper tab. Uh, it's also fairly tall in, multiple places. Like back here, the butt of the knife is very tall compared to the Spyderco PM2, that big hump. And when we uh, put the uh, flipper tab and the 
you know, maximum height of the knife up against the PM2. You can see here it's just tall. There's gonna be quite a bit of room taken up. It's the same thing though with like the Hinder XM18. The Hinder XM18 and the uh, this guy right here, if you wanna see, um, if we look straight down, you can see that this guy, the Project X is just a bit taller. But like I said, they do take up an incredibly similar amount of room in the pocket. So if you're used to carrying the XM18, it's probably not gonna be a whole lot different carrying the Project X. This is slightly bigger, right? Let me get uh, an XM18 out that's got a G10 scale and then we'll weigh them. Um, so you guys kind of know, you know the difference in weight because this one right here is full titanium. So um, weight on this guy. Uh, the Project X is coming in at 6.31 ounces, which is definitely heavy and not per perfect in terms of ratios. Uh, the XM18, three and a half inch. In this case, I believe this is a Spanto, yeah. Um, this guy's coming in at about 5.57 ounces. My XM24, which has a carbon fiber scale, coming in at about 7.65 ounces. So again, the Project X coming in at 6.31, I don't know if that's the same as it was a second ago. Uh, it's in between, right? This is about, it's funny, this is about peak all the way around. In terms of maximum length, maximum weight, this is about the biggest knife that I personally would carry. It's it's a little bit less, like a quarter inch longer than I, what I always say is my maximum. Um, but I have enjoyed, I still enjoy carrying my XM18, which is, uh, my, my full titanium one is actually heavier than this. Um, but uh, yeah, this is about as big a knife as I would carry, but I, I would still carry it. That being said, this is obviously going to be too big, too thick, too heavy for a lot of people. Not everybody, but a lot of people. It's also going to be illegal for a lot of people because we have a blade length of 3.6 inches. This does have better ratios than most hinder knives that have, because standard hinder knives have choils up here. They just do. The DLT exclusive variants do not have choils. That's DLT's thing, right? Uh, well, it's one of their things. Um, so if you ever see a hinder with a no choil, that's a deal. It is a real hinder knife. It's just a DLT exclusive. So most hinders have choils, um, which is why we have a better blade to handle ratio with, um, with this guy. I mean, at least cutting edge to handle ratio. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness. I want to say that these are still 160 to 165 thousandths. And I say, I say still, I mean, because that's like standard XM18 blade thickness. So yeah, it says 163, probably 165. So still about the same. Hardware check. Let me get out my tools as per... Oh, wait. No, I don't need to get out my tools because the freaking thing is attached to the knife. <laughs> oh, Rick Hinderer, um, Mr. Innovation. So if you don't know, Rick Hinderer is, uh, you know, the gentleman who came up with the triway pivot system, which is that symbol right there. And that allows you to switch out the internals. We had too many people. We had like, uh, you know, it's, imagine this. We, <laughs> we have members of the knife community who feel differently about things, like which pivot hardware is superior in different settings. I like nylon washers. Well, nylon washers suck, they tear. I prefer phosphor bronze. Bearings, obviously, pref I prefer bearings because they uh, provide the most exquisite to action. Right, okay, whatever. Uh, Hinder was like, you know what? Uh, let's just do all three. So I'll make the triway pivot system and make it so that you can take the knife apart. It'll come with all of that stuff and then you can just put whatever you want in there. It's currently running on bearings, but I don't know if this gentleman actually included the stuff in the box, he didn't. But it does come with the... Uh, steel spacers, the phosphor bronze washers, and the nylon washers, you can do that. Uh, the other, uh, one of the other most common complaints about hinder knives, and there are more than this, but a lot of people would say, okay, well, he's got Phillips screws on the pocket clip and the filler tab, he's got hex, then he's got a flat head, you know, and then there's like, uh, in, in some cases, I think some, like the Eclipse has like a torque, so that, and people are like, you gotta have like four different tools to take this thing apart. It really wasn't that big of a deal. Like they're all common tools, right? People are like, oh, it's proprietary, it's proprietary. It's ba you can use a coin, a penny with a notch cut in it, or fingernail clippers to undo this, and a flathead screwdriver, right? So the cries of proprietary are, sorry, <laughs> I'm gonna ignore that. Um, but in any case, this, this solves that problem. Not only um, does the tool 
Not only does he provide the tool, but the tool is the backspacer. And if you're worried, like, what if I lose the tool? No way. There is no way you can shake that tool out of there. You have to deliberately get in here and pick at that thing and pull it up. There's a spring, right? It's just like on the the full track, right? This is we've we've seen this before. Uh, the full track had uh, this tool that you push down, right, and then it sort of clips around this little standoff right here. So it pushes down, clips around that, snaps into place. So you can get it out of there, but you do have to dig at it just a little bit. It's not something that's gonna come flying out of your pocket. This fits the pivot. It fits the body screws. It fits this other body screw back here. Uh, and by the way, all of these are now captive, so we don't have to worry about a free uh, spinning pivot. It also fits the um, pocket clip screws, which are now just little teeny tiny hex, right? And it will also fit the lock bar stabilizer. The only thing it does not fit is the lock bar insert screw, which I agree with. Nobody needs to be messing with that. Don't take that out of there. Leave it alone. Um, I uh, And he's also got a really weird head. Like the, the head size for that is not a, I mean, you can find it if you really want to, but it's not, not one that people normally have with a regular tool set. Um, at least I've found out. So I think that's fine. Everything else about this knife can be easily, completely and totally taken apart with this tool. Um, yeah, that's great. Um, I hope that um, we see this in future models as well. I think that is wonderful and it totally kills the complaints, right? There's still gonna be people saying, well, if you lose the tool, you won't unless you, I would say if you lose the tool, you lost the whole knife. That's the only way you're gonna lose a tool is if you lose a whole knife, right? Unless you're gonna, you know, take it apart, lay the tool down and then walk off, which is, you know, you can do that with the whole knife as well. Sure, it's another part that you could lose. I feel like you're probably gonna be paying attention if you're carrying around a knife like this with you. So, as far as I'm concerned, that is an incredible thing to have on your knife, the tool coming with your knife. You really have to try to complain about that or see that as a, as a fault. Sorry. I mean, if I see comments about the com complaints of that, I'm going to think, boy, you're really trying to see the bad in that, right? This is pretty awesome. And yeah, I know I'm YouTube's biggest hinderer fan, right? But seriously, that that is excellent. It's really, really cool. I just, I, I would die to have that tool on my XM18 so that I didn't have to screw, I have adjusted my, I've had to, you know, come home and adjust at my XM, you know, various times. Not all the time, but various times. And I'm thinking, oh, I can't adjust it till I get home, right? With this guy, you can just do it on the fly, which is really cool. I love it. The flipper tab. That's another thing that, um, we hear about uh, the complaint with the flipper tab. The XM18 flipper tab is hook shaped and has jimping down here and ah, right? Yeah, you know, I agree. <laughs> it actually is pretty pointy. Uh, this guy is much less, let me tell you, this guy doesn't feel anything like the hook, like they have knocked that down just a little bit, but it made a huge difference. This is so much more comfortable to flip. And as you can see here, they ended the line of jimping right behind the flipper tab. You can see on the XM18, it extends a little bit further. This, no, it ends back here, so you're landing in a nice spot. You can light switch it, you can push button it. Is it perfect? No, far from a perfect flipper tab, but it still does its job, and if you didn't know, Rick Hinder designed these flipper tabs to be finger guards first. That's their primary role, is the finger guard, which is why it matches the curvature of this area right here, the choil, or the primary choil, whatever you want to call that, it matches that curvature perfectly. That's its main job. That's what it was designed to do. And then it is a flipper tab. It is a means of deployment second. Given that this uh, Project X currently only has one means of deployment, and it is the flipper tab, I'm really glad that he knocked that down a bit. It's not perfect. I'd give it about a B minus. But this, this was a D at, at best, right? If we're going to letter grade it. The flipper tab on the XM18 was a D. This guy, I'm going to give it a B minus. It's pretty good. Not perfect, but way better than the XM18. Way, way, way better. Plenty of room. This has never been an issue with hinder knives. Plenty of room to get in here and access the lock bar. You can see it's carved slightly above the show side scale, so that's great. No double clutch at all. Wonderful action. In fact, this has gotten smoother to the owner of this knife. This has gotten smoother and smoother and smoother. And I also noticed when it got to me, it had a little bit of lock stick. 
Guess what, bud? It's gone. When you get this knife back, which anybody who's confused, yeah, people who send me knives, they get their knives back. When you get this back, your lock stick's gone, man. Um, I didn't do anything to this. I just sat here and flipped it. So the action has gotten better and better and better. And that's what I've noticed with all of my hinder knives. This guy being my most used XM. This thing is so ridiculously smooth now. And I just, it's just from using it and flipping it over and over and over again, right? It just, that that's how they get. My 24s, both of them completely fall shut. Probably more so due to the mass of the blade. But yeah, this is wonderful. The action's wonderful. The detent is fantastic. Tuned in my opinion, properly, great. Ergonomics, wow. Honestly, the only thing that holds these knives back, and I can see why he hasn't changed it for so long, um, it's, it's the pocket clip. Now, this is still a good pocket clip. I'm not saying it's a bad pocket clip, but it is one of those where you can just feel it, just, it's not terrible, right? Again, I'd give it about a B minus. The clip is about a B. It's not 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 great. It used to be one of my favorite clips ever, but I've had countless examples throughout the years of clips that are better, right? It does kind of get right into the middle of your palm. Not terrible. You could go quite a while with your bare hands in this thing, and the only thing that would start to bother you is the clip. The rest of this knife, <laughs> oh, you are locked in. It is just at, listen, we do have kind of an aggressive peak right here, but the truth is where your hand is going to go, it really, you only have one choice unless you want a three finger, right? If you want a three finger and you want to chop or whatever, you really have one choice for a full grip. It's right here. In this one spot, you are absolutely locked in. Now, here's the problem. If your hands are smaller than mine, no big deal, right? Then you're maybe you're maybe you're in here. Fine, still very comfortable. For those of you who have larger hands, you, this butt end back here is hooked, so you're gonna be like this. Like those of you who have my, I wear an XL glove, right? My my hands are, I would say, as far as like the the you know the other guys that I know in my personal life, uh, my hands are pretty normal sized, right? XL glove doesn't mean anything. Sorry for those of you who. You know, if I'm bursting your bubble, XL glove doesn't mean you have XL hands. There are people out there who truly have XL hands. And those people can't enjoy knives like this because it's they're going to be like this. They're, they're pinky or sometimes some of these people who have absolutely monstrous hands, um, they're going to be hanging over the edge. I don't like knives that have this. I understand it locks most people in. This is going to work for most people, right? But anybody who's got hands that are bigger than this, you're kind of screwed by this little bump right here. This should have been shaved back. A great example of how this was done better was on another hinderer knife. One that I think, I don't know if we I mentioned this. This knife looks like the love child of the ZT0560 uh, and the, um, the hinderer full track. In the 0560, it did something similar back here, but it was not nearly as aggressive. You can look pictures of this up. It was the same kind of, you know, it had the texturing back here. But this part back here was kind of like this. That would have been, in my opinion, infinitely better. Now, <laughs> I don't know how much my opinion is worth up against Rick Hinder, right? I mean, the, the guy clearly knows what he's doing. Uh, his knives have been proven to be tough. Uh, anybody who's laboring under the delusion that this is an expensive knife and expensive knives don't get used and that we're all just making no uh for your information hinder knives have been around for a really long time there are an infinite number of examples of these knives being taken out used had the, the absolute crap beat out of them we have way too much field data on these things we know already there is no are they being used are they as durable as they say uh that's not happening <laughs> That's, that's only something that pops into the head of someone who is new to hinder knives or just doesn't know that there's this massive pool of field data backing these things. These are factually durable, factually being used by so many people. There are so many hinder knives just circulating, right, in the, in the knife community. Uh, yes, hinder knives are durable. They stand up to the use and abuse, etc. But anyways, um, under, you know, I, I think like, yeah, you would lose the absolute lock-in of being between here and here, but I don't think we need it. I think the general curvature of this knife, I've never had an issue locking in on my XM18. I've never had an issue. And the back of the knife 
just sort of comes to this, right? This has been fine. The ergonomic lines of the hinder have always been great. This guy, I don't think needed that back end. And I, it feels like I'm being overly harsh, but I know that you guys know that I'm a massive hinderer fan. So I don't wanna gloss over stuff like that. That's actually something that I don't like. I wish that this was cut back, right? But it isn't. So there you go. If you have monster hands, you might not like that this is all the room you get, right? I'm pretty crammed into this spot, right? That's about all the space that I've got at the back if I'm all the way up to the front. Now, on the flip side of that, something that's nice, the fact that all we have here is a sharpening choil and not a finger choil, right? Which is kind of what you get on the XM18, three and a half inch. The cutting edge is very close to where your finger is, right? So, and there's nothing in the cutting path. There's no thumb stud. I kind of do miss the whole external stop thing, but can we see we have a fixed stop pin in there, which is kind of cool. I don't know if it was the half track like that. I think maybe the half track and full track were like that too. That's fine. doesn't need thumb studs. There's nothing in the cutting path. So you can just cut and cut and cut and you're good, right? This is not what I'd call a blade with a thin edge. A lot of you know that Hinder Knives is well known for doing skinny versions of everything. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised at all if in the future we get a skinny version of this guy, um, where instead of 160 or 165 thousandths, we get a blade that is 140 to 145 thousandths and drops down to a um, you know a thinner edge. Um, but uh, this guy drops down to I would say a medium you know, a hard use edge, one that is thin enough to cut and process materials like wood, rope, rubber, things that it's likely to come in contact with in the setting that it was designed to be used in. Or, you know, considering, like if we're, let's be real here, the vast majority of people who pick this up will use it for stuff like opening packages, <laughs> opening cardboard boxes that contain more knives. And it'll do that too, just not with the same level of efficiency, uh, efficiency as an open L. But, open L's are boring in these arms. So, you know, it's like, if this, if this is your dedicated box opener, I get it. <laughs> I do. Right. But yeah, uh, we have a flat that is, it's pretty high, right? Where, where the blade starts to, uh, drop. I mean, it drops, it's a flat grind. Right. Um, but, uh, the taper is not super aggressive, but it's also not lazy. Uh, it's kind of in between. So you get this kind of medium edge down here. We have a flat carrying out to about, 60 or so percent and we got a nice little swedge up here in fact the blade looks excellent as usual hinders tumbled finish just looks great um this is something that has been slowly tweaked over time to just look better and better and better give you a look at my xm24 which is fairly similar to my old s35 vn harpoon spanto which is and they're all about the same. This is different than Hinder's tumbled finish used to look. Those of you who have some early Gen 4s or some Gen 3s or you know back, you'll you'll remember when it was a lot more scratchy. It was actually much chunkier scratches. This is more of a fine, right? It just looks good. Um, all of the corners and everything are nicely knocked down. Not going to be able to strike a ferro rod very efficiently off the back of that, but me personally, I don't care. I think this looks great. I love how it transitions into the jimping here. And the jimping is way less aggressive. Oh my gosh, it's way less aggressive, which is great. This is just insane, the way that this used to be done. This is this is fantastic. This just feels perfect. Nice lock-in. I love that this is a clip point blade. I think in the future we'll probably see, you know, harpoon spantos and spantos and Warren Cliffs and all that stuff, right? I mean, eventually, um, if this is as popular as the XM18, which we don't really know yet. I know that these are selling out like crazy at the moment, but um, I would imagine that these um, uh, will have all the blade shapes if they remain popular. So yeah, Hinderer logo on this side. We have S45VN over here. Of course, these are made in the USA. So a lot of stuff nowadays that says USA made. Um, let me remind everybody, um, that not everything that is USA made is 100% made in the USA. It means mostly, in, in a lot of cases, it means mostly made in the USA. As far as I know, part of the reason why knives like Hinder knives are so expensive is because they are legit USA made. I think the only thing that's not made in the USA on this knife are the individual bearings. 
because they cannot be produced in the quantity that he needs to keep up with the, you know, the rest of the knife and the demand, right? He can't even keep these things in stock. So trying to make the bearings in the United States would just slow everything down. Outside of that, the rest of this is legit made in the USA, right? So for people saying, I can get a US made knife for $100 from, stop. Um, I hate to burst your bubble, but it's more than likely that the whole thing's not made in the USA, right? And that's okay, it's all right. But just know a lot of times that's why, right? Sure, the materials play a role, fit and finish, overall quality, execution, those are all elements, right? But one of the biggest factors here is that this is really made in the USA, which is why I have such a massive amount of respect for hinderer knives. Anyways, um, yeah, blade good, seating of the hardware good, integrated tool good, modular nature still fairly intact good because we have the same pocket clip. Right, so if you have older hinder knives that have cool clips and you're like, oh, what are you can still put your cool clips on these or clips that come out in the future, right? It's gonna fit that. Same with a lock bar stabilizer disc. Those are also, as far as I can tell, it's the same thing, right? Very good, very, very good. Um, let's go ahead and finish up here. Lock bar insert, that's great. Um, the, uh, the stop pin, like I said, is internal. How does it lock out? How do you think it locks out? <laughs> It's bank vault, it's a hinderer. There's no blade play whatsoever. Uh, there is no pivot lash on this guy. I've never felt pivot lash on a hinder. Perfectly smooth. This, just perfectly smooth. Perfectly. Detent, nice click. That's just a nice, ah, love it. No detent lash, very good. So. The cons, uh, it's it's huge. Uh, this is this is a big knife. I mean, I know like it's not as big as my cold. Steel. Oh yeah, okay, all right. Except for people who carry cold steel knives and have to tell us every single time, right? This is a big knife to everybody else. Um, so it's either going to be something that's uncomfortable versus other knives that you're maybe used to carrying, um, and uh, it might be way too heavy for a lot of people, especially if you like to wear you know athletic shorts every day. Um, it also might be illegal. You might just live in an area where you can't carry something like this. Hinderer fans. Let me speak to hinderer fans directly for a second. Uh, yeah, you want this. <laughs> as a hinderer fan, as a fan of the XM18, I mean, I love the XM18. This feels like the XM18's cool cousin, right? He's, he's, he's just as hardcore. Maybe they both grew up in the, sm in the same small town and then he went off, right? And, uh, you know... Whatever, he made a career for himself in some other state and came back to visit and he's still cool, right? Yeah, I love that they textured the lock site as well, which is something we didn't talk about very much. I love that. It's always felt a little unbalanced, right? Here's a full titanium XM24, which I love, right? I love the texture, but then you flip it over this side and it's not textured. This kind of brings back that feeling from the 0560 days where you have the textured lock side and the textured show side. This is perfect texturing. It's not too, it's not too grouchy. It's not going to tear up your pants, right? But it just feels good and it looks excellent. And I think, you know, like this, where we have a bronze anno because they, they, they'll still do the bronze and the blue and then the regular stone washed. And then they'll do the battle ones where it's kind of a more matte blue or bronze. Uh, or or regular, just kind of gray, right? They'll do that. But I think that this gives a lot more character to the, I've never been a fan of picking up the anno, the anode ones because they just look so blah with the flat, like this, I always went with the stonewash ones. I'm way more likely to pick up a textured one now that, um, you know, it looks like this. The textured lock side is just, that's beautiful. I love this so much. Um, and I cannot wait for him to do titanium scales. Um, I will own a full titanium Project X. Um, another downside, of course, like I said, um, the uh, the back, you know, this hump right here. A lot of people are going to say, I don't care. That's advantageous. If it's advantageous to you, then you can ignore this. If your hands are XL, right, then you might have a problem here. Uh, for those of you who like to move around a little bit on your knife, you're not going to be. If your hands are the same size as mine, you got this position, or you can three finger it back here, which admittedly, if you're gonna do that, that does help you lock in with three fingers. You're gonna be able to do that. So it depends on how you look at it. Me personally, I don't like to do this. I don't chop with a pocket knife. 
I'll use, you know, a hatchet or something. I'm gonna use a knife like this, lots of continuous cutting. Um, so for me, that's kind of annoying, but it depends on who you are, right? Um, this is excellent. How much is it? It's 500 bucks. That's $75 more than an XM18, and it's essentially built the same way. Yeah, you're getting an integrated tool though. That's not something that's cheap to make. Oh, also, uh, inflation. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know, but everything that this knife is made out of costs him more money now. It does. I'm not making, I'm not just guessing, it, it does. Titanium, oof. I've heard titanium is way more expensive now. I don't know exactly how, how much more expensive, but I've heard it's way more expensive. Um, so yeah, uh, it's 500 bucks. That's more expensive than an XM18, 75 bucks more. It's still an expensive knife in general, right? But we are in a very specific tier of knife. This knife cannot be compared with a lower tier. Like I said, this ain't the same thing as a $150 USA made knife. I'm not, Nobody should be pretending for a second that this is the same thing. No, we are in a different tier. Um, much, much, you know, truly, truly USA made. Plus we have a totally, totally different level of craftsmanship here. This is a much higher quality item. Are you getting that much more utility, right? Out of this knife versus a 50 or $100 knife? Well, no, you know, I, like I could still get by with my rat, sure. But is this a higher quality knife overall, right? Yeah. Uh, do I think it'll outlast something like the rat? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I, 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 this, this knife will, will inevitably last longer. Um, for sure, right? Unless people are doing stupid things, right? Like if you leave this in a drawer and don't touch it for 20 years, and every day you put this in a vise and beat on it with a sledgehammer for 20 years, well then sure, right? But this knife, generally speaking, is gonna outlast a lot of knives that are of lesser quality. But um, yeah, uh, this uh, to me at, at 500 bucks, it's higher than what it used to be, but all things considered, I think that's pretty good. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, Rick Hinder uh, and the knives that he makes, it's one of the top USA companies right now. I mean, there are a lot of USA, full USA companies that are priced higher. Uh, there's a lot of uh, other ones that have been around for a long time offering relatively the same level of quality for about the same price. Um, I think his prices are still competitive. I think he, he knows where he is in the market. Um, I think that this definitely um, is gonna fill a gap uh, for a lot of people who have just been frustrated with past hinder designs. And for people who have never experienced a hinder knife, this might be the one that brings you over to our side, right? I'm a hinderer fan, I am. I have no problem saying that. I wanna make it clear. This knife is being reviewed by somebody who loves hinder knives. This is really cool. Perhaps the clip is slightly outdated, and I gotta say, I, I still would have liked to see this contoured, like the 0562, that would have just been cool. And I'm still holding out for Hinder to do a countersunk liner lock, but that's another thing. As this sits, this is a great knife, highly recommended, and I'm definitely gonna put it on my favorite knives of all time playlist. I'm so pumped to finally get a clear, like, you know, to me, this is a an XM18 competitor. It does a lot of things better, right? Um, but instead of being kind of goofy shaped like the like the, the Jurassic or way too big uh, like the Full Track, it kind of it it dials it back a notch, right? You're getting an XM18 sized knife with an XM24 sized blade, or at least cutting edge and an integrated tool and the triway pivot system. There's a lot of good here and not very much bad. This is highly recommended if you can get your hands on it. When they drop, go for them. My opinion is you will be very pleased. Thanks again to the gentleman who sent this in. I think that's gonna be it. Boy, this was a long review, of course, right? This will actually be in three playlists. Most recommended, favorite knives of all time, and hinderer knives. If you didn't know, I have a gigantic hinderer knives playlist, so if you wanna check that out, you can. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.